Kevin, thank you so much for agreeing to chat with me today. It's always a pleasure, Paul. Tell me about uh, the conversations you've heard around patient centricity, what you believe we're getting right and what you believe we need to still work on. Well, certainly, in my opinion, what people are getting right is that they're talking about this. I mean, you know, Paul, the first time I came to I for Pharma was maybe 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, and nobody talked about this. I mean, it was all about SFE, right? It was all sales force effectiveness, which is important, of course. Uh, and now, I mean, think about it. You know, the entire beginning of this entire event has been talking about patients and patient centricity. So one way or the other, clearly there's a, a fundamental shift, uh, a real sea change, I would say, in, in terms of the attitudes of executives and pharma. I think that's what people are getting right. Now, what I won't be so pretentious as to say what people are getting wrong, but one of the things that really strikes me is that I still think there's a disconnect in the minds of people between patient centricity and business. So we have a lot of people who are saying, um, yeah, we have to be more patient centric because it's the right thing to do. We have to be more patient centric and not worry about profit so much. Uh, we're not in it for the money. Um, well, it certainly is the right thing to do, but luckily it also is the right thing to do for the bottom line. And I don't think that it's an either or, or. in fact I know it's not an either or kind of situation. It's not, let's forget about doing business for a while and put together something patient centric and spend some time on patients. It's fundamentally, this is the new commercial model for pharma as well. You don't have to say, we're not in it for the money. You don't have to say, let's not think so much about profits. Think about profits and you'll be more patient centric because it's, that's the right way to make more money. But there are instances, aren't there, where closing a product that's in late stage development, making a, a decision whether or not to put your resources in one place or the other, where a leap of faith at the very least is required for that business model to catch up. Um, if you are going to prioritize the patient, isn't there? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, new business models come about because of leaps of faith. That's, that's the, the, the fun part of running any, any business. You have to, from time to time, say, look, I'm convinced that in the long term, in the long run, this is what's going to work. Uh, and the innovators will take that leap of faith. And then when they start making money, the others will take it after them. You have started successful companies, several, in the past. So you know what it takes to create something from scratch. and. The way you're talking suggests that um, pharmaceutical companies are genuinely becoming more innovative and entrepreneurial. Is that true or is that just where you say they need to get to? I think it's certainly true. And we're seeing a, diff a, a typical kind of diffusion of innovation. Okay? There are some companies that recognize they, they're going to have to go this direction. Um, there are many companies, and I think it also depends on the country. I mean, let's face it. Why are we shifting more into patient orientation? Fundamentally, if we look at a business perspective, a lot of it has to do with the fact that the old commercial model is broken. Uh, when, uh, when I used to work for IMS and thought leadership, that was one of the central elements of IMS's thinking. The old commercial model is broken. And they knew that because the old commercial model was based on very high response curves, essentially to frequency from physicians. In other words, I, if I were to look at my frequency against physicians, and I would look at my sales, th the relationship was clear. And particularly in very large markets like the United States and particularly in very competitive uh, classes such as um, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, anti-ulcerants, and I mean the big old blockbuster GP-oriented things. And to the degree that that model worked, there's no pressure to change the model. Those response curves had flattened out dramatically, but at differing rates in different countries, right? So, if you're working in the UK today, I mean, how much are, are you going to get back from increasing your frequency against GPs? Let's face it, right? Uh, and to various degrees, you can draw these conclusions in different European markets. However, in China, right, there's still good return on frequency on many therapies, even in Japan in certain respects, even in the United States to a certain So I think that, and of course, it also depends on the class, right? So, I think companies are moving more towards a new innovative approach, largely as a function of, first of all, who the management is and how innovative they are as individuals, and secondly, how much pressure are they under with respect to an eroding, old-fashioned uh, commercial model, which is eroding at different rates for different people.